The great thing about creating these videos is that nothing is ever really carved in stone. I keep learning things and never really stop researching, which means that some of these videos merit a part two. So strap on your seatbelts, the no smoking sign is on. Do you see where I'm getting here? And this video is about to take off. In 2020, we produced a video mainly to answer two questions. Number one, what happened to this structure that had been sitting outside the library for decades? And number two, why was there a structure built to begin with? Well, it turns out in 1910, there was an air show right here in Point Claire, the first one in Canada. People from all around the country came to see it. There were planes, there were hot air balloons, parachutes, zeppelins, mock bombing, thousand feet grandstands, and apparently Nikola Tesla showed up. So that covered the why. The what of what happened to the monument is that it was disassembled some 20 years ago and just the plane remains had been sitting in public works for 20 years. It was something out of Indiana Jones. It's now two years later and I feel that I need to offer an apology. I underestimated the level of appreciation Point Claire had for this historic event at that time, the time when they built the monument, 57 years after the event, 57. But in my defense, an argument can be made that Point Claire overestimated their capability to pay tribute to Canada's crowning aviation achievement. This is what was installed to commemorate the air show in 1967. But this wasn't the original design. Oh well, no no, not even close. The monument was originally supposed to be built in 1960, 50 years after the event, for the 50th anniversary, and it was supposed to be much bigger. Let's give some context. These were the years of growth. These were the years of mass development. They were dreaming big and tall, which explains this. This was the structure that was first proposed to build commemorating the air show. No, not for the World's Fair, but for here, around the much criticized Lakeside Heights water tower. The water tower. It was designed by Lorne E. Marshall from Barrett Marshall Merritt and Barrett. The same guys who designed this and this and this and all of this. Now the first proposal of the aviation monument happened in January of 1959 and nothing happened for six months until in June that same year, two more designs were submitted. Dumping the water tower idea, why ruin the iconic checkerboard, the location changed to where the library is today. And this time Marshall went a bit more modest, but nothing happened again until 1961 when yet another design was submitted. Now it's really looking like what ended up being the final 1967 design. At this point, some $206 had been raised to build either this, 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 or this. <laughs> But nothing happened again until the next best available year, the year of our centennial, the year of Expo 67. In 1967, in the summer, it was finally installed with this design. Now, since making this video, the monument itself has taken on its own little endangered story. You'd think knowing now the struggle that it took to even get the monument to commemorate this event, to have it completely removed and for the better part destroyed, sounds a little upsetting to me. But alas, sometimes your host is the bearer of good news. We, we didn't know until we saw your video that there was any kind of uh, monument that had existed at one point. So that was a, a nice surprise for us. Yeah, we ended up uh, contacting the uh, city of Point Blair and uh, signed an agreement with them. So we have it uh, on display at the uh, museum right now. You're kidding. That's an amazing! Although it's been orphaned by the rest of the monument, you can actually go see the plane, the top part of the monument, in the Aviation Museum of Montreal. It's there, in St. Anne de Bellevue. Is that not a happy ending or what? Enjoy your day.